Welcome to this comprehensive guide to a game-ready asset workflow. In this guide, I'll cover the purpose of real-time models, why optimization is crucial, and most importantly, the workflow I followed for my professional works as well as my personal projects. In real-time games, your models are always rendered on the fly, 60 plus times per second. At least, that's what we're aiming for. If your models are bloated with millions of polygons, oversized textures, slop UVs and so forth, the game ultimately suffers. Think of longer loads, drop frames, performance dips. Optimization isn't optional, it's the only way to make your work usable. So what does this game ready workflow look like? You start with a high poly sculpt or model. Next is the retopology phase, or you optimize the model if you started hard surface modeling it. Regardless if you sculpted or modeled it, at this point we're going to optimize it. We're gonna lay down the seams and we try to do this in hidden areas as much as possible. After we lay down the seams, it's time to UV unwrap. So this part, we're going to pack the UVs. And we want to use as much space as we can because any space you don't use is wasted space. Now we're going to color code our high poly meshes. This will help when we want to generate an ID map, which is essentially a quick solution to mask out stuff during our texturing process. The naming convention is very important for our baking software to understand which is the high and which is the low poly model. So we use a suffix of underscore high for our high poly models and a suffix of underscore low for our low poly models. The name before the suffix has to match for both the low and high poly models. For instance, head underscore high and head underscore low will be automatically linked together in software like Marmoset Toolbag. Now we select everything and we export it correctly as an FBX file. Now you can use a number of software to bake you can use Blender, you can use add-ons that do it way better than the vanilla version of Blender. You can use Substance Painter, but my preference is Marmoset Toolbag because of how easy it is to iterate, go back and forth, re-export and just update everything on the fly. Regardless of your baking software of choice, now is the time to bake. Now we're going to export a bunch of maps. The maps that I usually generate are normals, height, position, curvature, cavity, thickness, bent normals, ambient occlusion, and material ID or object ID. Now we're going to the texturing part. Import all of your baked maps and assign them correctly into the slots. I'm using Substance Painter, so it allows me to assign all my baked maps in the shader settings. You can use the ID maps to quickly mask out stuff, like I said before. After the texturing is done, I'm going to export my maps efficiently. Now maps like the albedo need their own RGB space, but maps like the ambient occlusion, roughness, metallic, they're black and white, so we could assign them to a singular channel only, like the red channel, the green channel, or the blue channel. So this is where an ORM map becomes very useful. An ORM map is essentially an occlusion, roughness, and metallic map scattered across the R, G, and B. So it's essentially like stuffing three maps into a singular texture map. And you can do this for a bunch of different maps as long as they're black and white. Now that I have my textures, I'm going back to my 3D software of choice. I'm going to set up my shaders with the textures and light up my model. This is for the purpose of look dev testing. It will just save you a whole bunch of time because you'll guarantee you're gonna find stuff that didn't work out properly in the texturing phase or the baking phase and now's the time to adjust stuff. One of the last things that I'm going to do is set up my LODs and an additional collision mesh if it's really necessary. I'm going to manually either dissolve edges or use a decimate modifier as long as it doesn't destroy the mesh too much. Now it's time to select everything and export it as a singular FBX file. Finally, I'm going to import it into my gaming engine of choice and set it up with the shaders and textures. Now, if your model is a character, you will need a bunch of more steps before you can go to your gaming engine. For one, you need to rig the model, weight paint it, and also test it for clipping issues. I have videos regarding that linked in the description below, so make sure to check that out. So yeah, optimization isn't just for the programmers or engine nerds. It's a part of your job as a 3D artist. A game-ready model doesn't just look good, it works. In the next video, I'll showcase the production of a simple game asset. If these videos become a series with some demand, I'll ultimately build it up to a full free course on how to create a game-ready character tailored to your own designs. So, if this helped, give it a like, drop any questions below, and don't forget to subscribe with the bell notification icon turned on. See you in the next one.